For many years, there has been a debate about whether the asteroid belt, which lies between Mars and Jupiter, was a planet that destroyed itself. Many people have speculated about this, and some exciting theories may support this idea. In this video, we'll explore this theory and examine the scientific evidence to determine if the asteroid belt is the remains of an ancient planet. The asteroid belt is a ring-shaped region of the solar system between Mars and Jupiter. It is made up of several million asteroids, ranging from a few centimeters to several kilometers. It also contains five objects of greater mass, which are Ceres, the dwarf planet, and the massive asteroids Pallas, Vesta, Hygieia, and Juno. Between these five, they make up more than half of the total mass of the entire asteroid belt. And contrary to what is seen in the movies, where a ship that crosses the asteroid belt has to perform incredible maneuvers to evade them, the reality is that each asteroid is separated by more than 5 million kilometers. That is to say that it is almost impossible to collide with one. In fact, the probes that explore the limits of the solar system and that have passed through that region have never had any problem of colliding with even minor asteroids. Discovery in 1766, the astronomer Johann Daniel Titus discovered a supposed pattern in the distance of the planets from the Sun. The pattern consisted of a numerical sequence that started from zero, continued with three, and from there the previous figure was doubled so that the sequence remained 0, 3, 6, 12, 24, 48, etc. If you add 4 to each figure and divide it by 10, you have the sequence 0.4, 0 0.7, 1, 1 1.6, 2.8, 5.2, 10, etc. And why were these numbers important? Johann Daniel Titus took this sequence of numbers, converted them to astronomical units, and compared them to the distances the planets were. When he compared the sequence of numbers to the actual distances of planets from the Sun, he discovered that the similarity was very significant. The sequence seemed to predict the position of the planets around the Sun very accurately. The strange thing is that it marked areas where planets had not yet been found. For this reason, in 1871, the astronomer William Herschel speculated that perhaps there would be a seventh planet right in the region predicted by the Titus Bode law after the planet Saturn, and to everyone's surprise, shortly after the planet Uranus was discovered which was right in the region that predicted the numerical sequence, which is why from then on it began to be called the Titus Bode Law. Before we continue, for those who are wondering why was this law called Titus Bode, it's not because the discoverer was called Titus and Bode. It was because two years after Johann Daniel Titus discovered the numerical sequence, Johann Ellert Bode used this exact measurement in one of his writings without telling anyone that Titus had discovered it. In this way, for 15 years, various authors attributed the discovery of the sequence to Bode and placed him in the references of several books instead of Titus. When the misunderstanding was fixed, Bode's name had already been used so much that the law ended up being called Titus Bode. If you like this video, we invite you to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss all of our videos. After the discovery of Uranus, the Titus Bode law gained strength, but there was still an error. That error was that the law predicted that there was a planet between Mars and Jupiter. However, until then, no planet had been discovered in that place. In Search of the Elusive Planet In 1801, the astronomer Franz Xavier von Zach began the search for the happy planet that was between Mars and Jupiter. He summoned 24 astronomers to form what would be known among themselves as the Celestial Police, which there were significant astronomers like William Herschel, Charles Messier, Johann Ellert Bode, Heinrich Olbers, to name a few. They soon got to work observing this region of the sky night after night until just one year later, the Italian astronomer Giuseppe Piazzi beat them to it and found a small planet he named Ceres. Although Piazzi had already found the famous planet, it was tiny, so at first the astronomical community did not consider it a planet but rather a non-gas comet. Fifteen months later, Heinrich Olbers, a member of the Celestial Police, 
found a new object right in the same region where Ceres was located, which he named Pallas. This puzzled astronomers since both Ceres and Pallas were in precisely the same region where they should not have found a planet, but instead they were finding tiny bodies that were not planets. Subsequently, the discovery of Juno followed, then the asteroid Vesta, then Astrea, and suddenly astronomers began to find hundreds of small bodies that all orbited in the same region. Since they were neither planets nor stars, they were classified with a new name, asteroids. The new type of object was a tiny body that orbited the Sun in the region between Mars and Jupiter. They did not become planets, but they were not comets or satellites. Ceres and the Asteroid Belt Logically, when finding hundreds of small bodies where they should have found a planet, astronomers thought that perhaps in that region at first there was a planet destroyed, and only the fragments that made it up remained. These fragments were the asteroids that astronomers were discovering. Another theory suggests that the planet would have formed in a different orbit and was destroyed by a collision with another celestial body. According to this theory, the remains of the planet would have been scattered throughout the solar system, and some would have gathered in the asteroid belt. For some years, this idea seemed attractive to many astronomers of the time, especially Giuseppe Piazzi, who, after discovering Ceres, repeatedly urged the scientific community to classify Ceres as a planet and not as a non-gas comet. Let us remember that at that time, the classification of dwarf planet did not yet exist, and very little was known about the objects of the solar system. That is why the idea of Ceres being classified as a planet seemed attractive to many other scientists who considered that this object met all the requirements to be a planet, especially the fact that this object matched the predictions of the Titus Bone Law. Many scientists genuinely believed that Ceres was the fifth rocky planet in the solar system that the law predicted. In fact, Ceres appeared as a planet in astronomical books and tables of the time for more than half a century. Until the 1850s, when many other similar objects were found in the same region of space, Ceres and that group of bodies were called the Asteroid Belt, where Ceres would be the largest. The scientific consensus was shielded by the argument that Ceres was too small to be considered a planet. But the discovery of the asteroid belt led another group of scientists to imagine it was the remnants of an ancient destroyed planet they called Phathon. The planet Phathon, the origin of the asteroid belt? In 1802, the German astronomer Heinrich Olbers proposed that objects in the asteroid belt, including Ceres, were fragments of a planet that initially revolved around the Sun. He also predicted that more of these pieces would be found as part of the asteroid belt. The discoveries of the asteroid Juno by Carl Ludwig Harding and of Vesta by Olbers supported this hypothesis. Theories related to the formation of the asteroid belt from the destruction of a hypothetical fifth planet are now collectively called disruption theory. This theory indicates that at some point, there was a central planetary member of the solar system circling in the current gap between Mars and Jupiter, which was destroyed by some unknown event, such as it was getting too close to Jupiter and being torn apart by the gas giant's powerful gravity, hitting another large celestial body, among other hypotheses. In the 20th century, the Russian meteorite scholar Yegveni Krinov, involved in investigating the Tungusta event, suggested that the planet exploited in Olber's theory was called Phathon after the Greek myth. Taking then into consideration the previous existence of Phathon from the academic world, other scientific theories arose that supported the idea of considering the dwarf planet Ceres or even Mars as ancient natural moons of said disappeared planet. One of the assumptions to affirm that Mars was an ancient natural satellite of Phathon, which after the cataclysm, found its orbit in the solar system would be based on the characteristic and irregular exposure to meteorites suffered by the Martian surface. Until recently, the Phathon hypothesis has been rendered obsolete by the accretion disk model. However, the recent discoveries that have taken place since 2010 regarding the specific composition of certain asteroids in the belt between Mars and Jupiter have made this hypothesis reconsidered as possible. The True Origin of the Asteroid Belt Once studies of the chemical composition of objects in the asteroid belt began, 
Astronomers concluded that the diversity of asteroid composition was challenging to fit into the fifth rocky planet theory, so this idea was scrapped. But if the asteroid belt had not been a planet that was destroyed, then what was its true origin? And the current consensus in the scientific community is that initially, when the solar system was in formation between Mars and Jupiter, there was an accretion disk equal to the one that gives rise to the planets. In a planetary system, gaseous planets form first, since gas binds more easily than rocks. When the inner planets were forming, the matter that would give rise to the fifth rocky planet was disturbed by Jupiter's strong gravitational pull. The gas giant caused a large part of the matter that made up the disk to shoot out of the solar system, and the other part acquired very high speeds causing collisions between them. Thus, instead of the debris grouping to form a planet, they disintegrated each other, forming the asteroid belt that we currently have, leaving only 1% of the asteroids that were initially. In simpler words, the asteroid belt is not the remains of a planet that exploded, but rather the fragments of a planet that never managed to form. From its origin to date, it is thought that the asteroid belt has not changed much. Collisions between the largest asteroids occur once every few million years, and in fact it is thought that the famous asteroid that killed the dinosaurs came from this region of the solar system. So when someone asks you what is the function of the asteroid belt, remember that the asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs came from here and began the era of mammals that currently rule the planet. What other topic would you like us to talk about? Let us know your opinion in the comments.